Hello, welcome to the first episode of the True Gamer Top 10. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the top 10 worst Wii U games of all time. And now that the Wii U system for Nintendo has been out for a couple of years now, let's talk about the top 10 worst, most terrible Wii U games released of all time. Coming in at number 1, Pokemon Rumble U. Came out in 2013 on the eShop, Pokemon Rumble U is a boring and simplistic sequel to Pokemon Rumble Blast on the 3DS. The gameplay is far too linear and lacking any sophisticated strategy. It's also a Skylanders ripoff because they use Pokemon figures that you bought separately. The figures are also far too expensive, ranging between $5 to $20. The story is incredibly forced and gimmicky, the premise being several starter Pokemon, like Pikachu, they gotta find their way back to a Pokemon toy shop because they got flushed down the river. Wow, typical Nintendo milking Pokemon for all it's worth, even with a shallow game like this. Number 2, New Super Luigi U, that's right, uh, released in 2013 as DLC. Super Luigi U is hardly new, despite what the game implies. The title itself says new, but this is absolutely unoriginal. It's a complete rehash of previous platformers, and doesn't offer anything new or fresh at all in the platforming genre. It's all the same worlds, all the same powers, the same old tired Mario-style crap we've seen already in the past. It's also much less challenging than Mario Bros. U, and really makes Luigi look even more like an idiot. I mean, you know, he really is the lesser brother. The Year of Luigi. More like the fail of Luigi. Number 3, Batman Arkham Origins, came out in 2013. This is a prequel in the Arkham series, and easily the worst of the Batman 7th generation trilogy. The game has so much bugs and glitches, particularly the Wii U version, and really feels unpolished. There's a lot of freezing issues, which distract and obviously hinders the, the mission completion if you can actually complete it in the first place. The combat itself has a lot of slowdown issues, a lot of laggy. Batman can really sink through the floors, so he can actually fall through the freaking floors. That's nice, and then the boss fights are just far too easy, not challenging, the weapons and the combat systems absolutely stink. And this is easily one of the worst and most disappointing multi-plat ports on the Wii U. Horrible. Number 4. Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge. What can I say? Horrible camera system, bad storyline, repetitive enemies, frame rate issues and problems, uninspired gameplay. We've seen this so many times and it hasn't really changed that much since the very beginning. The Ninja Gaiden series, it just keeps sinking with, with sequels like Razor's Edge. Came out in uh, 2012, this was supposed to be originally a Wii U exclusive, but because of the crappiness of the entire experience, it became a multi-plat instead, and also came out eventually on the PS3 and the 360. Now that's absolute failure. Number 5, Zombie U. This is a launch title in 2012. You know, Zombie U, what else can I say? I mean, it's supposed to be this epic exclusive, but what we got was a clunky and dull combat system. Very dull. Uh, the enemies take way too long to kill. It has outdated survival horror elements, uh, of course, you know, the typical game-breaking glitches we've come to know with the Wii U. For example, the, the save, prog save progress can actually get lost and forcing you to restart all over again, so you gotta begin all over again, that's... Do, do I have to keep going? Should I keep going? I mean, you gotta use a stupid cricket bat to beat up the zombies, which makes no sense because cricket is a game that's only popular in India. <laughs> there you go, it's also very stupid to have, you know, these exploding zombies in the game. Really, exploding zombies? More like exploding diarrhea. Terrible. Coming in at number 6, The Wonderful 101, uh, one of the dumbest games of all time. 
Uh, this mess of a game came out in 2013, and it really should have never been released. It's a sort of a experimental title, uh, combining elements from previous games in the past, you know, games such as Beautiful Joe and Pikmin. The problem is the controls are really dragging down the experience. The difficulty is way too, way too high for a kids game, really. Uh, you know, you're seeing little kids try to play this, but it's way too difficult. The camera system is broken. Of course, the, the risky uh, weapon system can mess up your momentum, especially during uh, you know, a, a, a boss fight and a really important fight. The jokes are far too idiotic, so it's not humorous. The game has no style, it's got no charm, it's got no charisma. The Wonderful 101 is for hipster idiots that think they're playing something unique, but really just promoting an amalgamated piece of sewage. Number 7. Pikmin 3. Quite a few games for the Wii U came out in 2013, but Pikmin 3 is absolutely the bottom of the barrel. Uh, the controls sucked because it doesn't work well with a gamepad. Uh, it feels too much more of the same crap since, you know, the first Pikmin games on the GameCube, like, 15 years ago. Uh, the story mode is very boring. Uh, you're forced to watch the same repetitive cutscenes over and over again. The replay of value is just non-existent. Uh, it's got a limited style. The levels are very tedious. It, it, they took out the marching from the previous experience, and then, you know, it, it makes the f game feel very weak and shallow. There's no marching. Um, it's, it's way too short. And the experience just feels like a complete waste of money. Pikmin, more like... Crapman. Um, let's move on. Number 8. Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. Um, this is another 2013 release. It's actually another title from the 6th generation era that, uh, that came back. Except unlike Pikmin 3, Wind Waker HD is a blatant rehash instead of an actual new game. The art style is pretty decent, I gotta admit, for a GameCube game, but not for a 8th gen system. This looks like a bunch of scribbled crap that, you know, some 2 year old created uh, in freaking kindergarten. Um, the in-game content sucked. So bad, you know, you're messing around with the boat, which is pointless, you know, the story is aimed towards little babies and small children. It basically means, you know, Nintendo was doing the typical childhood kitty pandering that no self-respecting adult can even pretend to enjoy. Wind Waker sucks, and it doesn't even utilize the Wii U's actual graphical capabilities. It really drags down the Wii U's value as a system. Ugh. Number 9. Super Mario 3D World, uh, released in late 2013, we get more crappy unoriginal platforming from Nintendo. Is anybody surprised? The problem is that 3D World is not innovative at all compared to the previous classics of Mario. Uh, you know, they actually defined their generation. Games like Mario 64, uh, Mario Galaxy. It's not those games. 3D World is more like 2.5D World. Uh, the multiplayer is broken, and it's just, it's fixed, really. It's, it's glitched out, and it's basically designed for people that can sprint through the levels the quickest. So there's a bias in the gameplay. Uh, the camera angles are terrible. The lagging issues are very annoying. The graphics are very outdated for a supposed system that's supposedly competing against the PS4 and the Xbox One. Can you even fathom that? That's so embarrassingly pathetic. Too many cheap deaths, cheap deaths in the game. Uh, it, it's Mario, so hey, well, why don't we just buy it? Oh, it says Mario on it? What a bunch of super morons. And number 10, Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8. So Nintendo keeps going back to the well of kart racing as they've done time and time again in every generation. The problem is the lack of innovation or effort. Uh, the series, which has been around for years, is clearly outdated and has been outclassed by you know more recent uh, kart racing games. Sonic All-Stars Transformed, Mod Nation Racers. 
Well, for example, with Mod Nation, you can actually customize everything. You can customize the characters, even the tracks. That's interesting. Sonic All Stars has better tracks, awesome music, and cool vehicle variety. It's not just pure, uh, you know, on the ground racing. The worst part, though, about Mario Kart 8 is the horribly unbalanced gameplay and the vapid single player experience. And yes, the battle mode, you want to talk about, oh, well, the multiplayer and all this. Battle mode is complete. Battle Chode. Orangutan Feces. So that's pretty much it. The top 10 worst Wii U games of all time. And you know what? There's bound to come more Mario games and more uh, Nintendo games are on the way. But these are the worst so far. If I make an updated list, it's not going to be for a long time. Because trust me, these are pretty bad. And hopefully the Wii U turns around and gets better games, I should say. And the system becomes better. Overall, the Wii U, it's got a few good games here and there. You know, there's a little game there called... Uh, Cod Ghosts, Call of Duty Ghosts, uh, came out, I, I think, way back in, you know, 2012. That's a pretty sweet game. That's what you gotta get for the Wii U. But everything else, absolute pile of crap. So that's it for this episode of True Gamer Top 10. Thank you for tuning in. The True Gamer Top 10 is created, performed, and produced by the Review Space channel. Please check them out on youtube.com slash the Review Space. Thank you. Until next time.